everybody and welcome back to another Messy Church to Science at Home experiment. I hope you've enjoyed doing the experiments we've been doing over the previous uh, few weeks. Uh, and today we're going to do an experiment, a very simple experiment called seeing is not always believing. And we're going to explore the power of water. For this experiment, you just need a few simple things that you can get from your kitchen. You need a glass, preferably it's got to have flat walls, but a little curvature wouldn't matter. You need some water. This is just cold water in a jug. A small fork or spoon. I'm using a dessert fork for this experiment and a 2p coin or a 1p coin. Actually, any coin will do but make sure it's quite thin. So a 2p, a 1p, a 5p or a 10p piece. And finally, just two small bits of paper, white paper. They'll help show some of the experimental effects up later on. So take your 2p coin and put it on the center of the piece of paper and then or we'll turn it over so the Queen's head is facing up and then we put the glass of water on top. If I take the camera in my hand you can see the 2p piece sitting at the bottom of the glass. Now I'm going to take the jug of water I'm going to pour it into the glass and watch what happens to the 2p coin as I do it. What did you notice? If you stand and look at the glass from the side like I'm doing can you see the 2p coin? It's disappeared. But seeing's not the same as believing. So if we come closer to the glass and start to look on the inside, first of all, oh wow, there's the coin, but it's not at the bottom. It looks like it's higher up in the glass. In fact, it looks much bigger than it did at the beginning. And as we start to pan further in, we can see both the coin and its larger reflection on the side of the glass. So it was there all along. And then as we pan back away, we first lose the coin and then we lose its reflection and it's gone. So for our next experiment, we need the glass of water and we need the little fork or spoon that you've got. It's pretty strong, this fork. I suppose I could bend it, but it'd be very hard to break in two. But I'm going to see if I can break this fork in two just by using this water. I'm going to put a piece of white card or paper standing behind just to make it a little bit clearer. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the fork into the centre of the glass. And then I'm going to move it to one side. Can you see that actually the fork is broken? Where the handle goes into water, into the water, is different from where the handle appears in the water. Let me see if I can get a close-up of that for you. So the water is breaking the spoon. Or the fork. Now 
And now I'm going to see if I can teleport this spoon from one side of the glass to the other just by using the power of water. And to do that, we're going to push our spoon slowly behind our glass. Here it comes and there it comes out the other side. Can you see that? I can pull it out this way again. There's the spoon through the water. It's slightly larger because the water acts like a magnifying glass. We take it out. Now I'm going to push it in again. There it is. I'm going to pull it away slowly from the glass of water. And there, can you see that? When I push it in this side, it comes in the other side. If I push it in this way, the spoon that the fork appears on the other side of the glass like it's been teleported across and I'm pushing it in from the other direction. I'm not really. I'm only pushing it in from one direction. Light travels in straight lines, but when it moves between the water and air, it gets bent a little. This means objects in water appear to be at a slightly different position than they really are. It can make picking things up from water really tricky. You can't always believe your eyes. The fork is transported across the glass because it works like a convex lens. They turn things the wrong way round. The lens in your eye works just like that. The image that you see at the back of your eye is upside down and back to front, but your brain turns things the right way round again. It was hard for Jesus' disciples to believe Jesus was alive on Easter Day especially for one called Thomas. Unless he saw Jesus, he said he would not believe it. So Jesus came specially to him so that he could see things the right way round. That's why Jesus came, to help us to see God the right way round. We can't see Jesus in the same way. But Jesus said to Thomas, you believe because you see me, Great blessings belong to the people who believe without seeing me. How do you see Jesus? Perhaps when you read a Bible story, you might imagine how he looks or how he cares for people. Perhaps when we see people loving and caring like Jesus did in our families, in our schools, in church or the world, perhaps we might see something of Jesus then. We're going to share a prayer together. The words are on the screen. Jesus, I haven't seen you with my eyes, but I believe in you. Jesus, help me to see you in people, in my family, in the church and in the world. Amen. Well, I hope you enjoyed that experiment exploring the power of water and whether seeing is believing. We hope you come back again as we do another experiment to explore the wonder of creation and the wonder of the creator. But until then, it's Dr. Dave here saying goodbye. God bless. <laughs>